What? Yeah! All right, friends, today is the day we are finally ready to put the finishing touches and release our all-terrain Flurkin. Now, if you guys have been following along with flight tests, we've been working on a project called the Flurkin for quite some time, and we even have a whole bunch of different models built around the same idea called the Flurkin family. Now, this is the final chopping for our Flurkin, and frankly, I think it is my favorite version because it's the most capable, and this version, you can take off and land. So if you guys have been following along with our previous episodes, you'll see where we took the all-terrain Flurkin, we put some pontoons on it, we put it up for its maiden flight. Now this thing performed fantastic off of snow, it flew fantastic, but unfortunately because it's winter and the lake was frozen, we couldn't test it off the water. So today we are going to be taking the final touches as we finish off this design, and at the end of this episode, we are going to be pushing this to the limits and seeing what it's capable of. We got a lot of work to do, let's get to it. So our next prototype is now done. This is with the removable pontoons and also we dialed in the tail much better now and I'm amazed because it came out to the millimeter, which means basically when you glue these on and you jig this up properly, everything from the tail to the fins and everything will just line up perfectly. Uh, my next step here is I'm gonna charge a battery. I'm gonna seal off the floats and we're gonna put it in the water this time because all the snow is finally melted and we're into spring and then we're gonna see how it flies. What do you think? Is water kind of... Yeah, it grates off of it rather than suck it in. Yep. So no, Dave, what do you think? Should we go to the river? Because that pond There's is... There's quite a bit of water in the creek right now. Yeah, the pond's kind of gross. So I think yeah, if we I get... the river would be fun. Could, uh, could you come out and... Sure. I'll come out grab and a, with you. Grab a, grab a stick with, uh, with some good reach. nice and cleaned out. It is. I guess that's what thunderstorms will do. Let's let's hop on this part right here. You'd have to take off more down. Yeah, definitely not. I'm not gonna fly it here. I'm just gonna see the float. I'm gonna go over here. That way if it starts going downstream, you have a chance to catch it, okay? Okay. Predictions? I might have to get my feet wet. <laughs> no, I think you are. I bet that water is nice and cold. It looks nice. <laughs> well, one good thing is these are pontoons that are removable, so that means we can change the design over and over and over again until we get it to work. Although, it doesn't look like it got wet inside at all. Well, that's good. But if anyone tries it this way, it's going to just get wet, period. But we got to make it so it flies off the snow and water just as good as each other. Yeah. And it did awesome off the snow. You're close. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Well, there you go. Sometimes some of the best things happen through failures, and I think this is gonna be one of them. Now, the all-terrain flurkin with the pontoons definitely performed amazing on hard surfaces like our Geotech runway. But when it came to things like our grass that was drier, or even the river, I would give it to that. There's no way we can call this the all-terrain flurkin if it's truly not all-terrain. We needed to be able to perform great off of grass, off of water, and off of snow. But we are not done with this idea. We have a brand new material that we've been working with. We recently just recreated and reimagined our tenant. It is a foam that is like no other. It is waterproof, it is CA resistant, it is incredibly durable, and it's also flexible. I think this is gonna be the perfect pontoon material moving forward. But in the meantime, we're gonna shift gears here so we can still bring this flurkin out in time for summer and time to enjoy. And we're gonna design an optional landing gear kit that's gonna give you the ability to, be able to take this off of high grass or ground. And then later on in the year, I'm gonna come back and instead of being the all-terrain flurkin, it's gonna be the all-terrain add-on. Now this design may not give you the ability to fly off of water, but what it is gonna give you is about 30% more speed and even longer flight times. And based off of what we learned with the Flurkin nose and over in the water, this nose gear configuration is also going to give us a mounting point for a future pontoon up in the nose, which will also make it not tip over in the water when we do add our pontoons later. And we're going to build one final version, we're going to paint it up, and we're going to put up for a test flight. 
All right guys, on this thumb drive here, I have something that will hopefully make my life and hopefully your life a lot easier. If you guys remember in the past, when we built our monster sized Bloomin' Flurkin, we did a really cool winter camo scheme and that was inspired from Captain America with the Red Skull wing. It looked really sick. But that scheme, unfortunately, took almost a whole entire day to paint and even then, we weren't entirely happy with it. So I got the idea to basically make a decal sheet that gave you guys the ability to be able to mix and match different colors and also different shapes to create the exact same thing in a matter of minutes. I got that in this thumb drive, we're going to cut it out, we're going to put it to test and see what happens. I was getting a little bit sentimental here. Recently, if you guys remember in our previous episodes, I took a version of our Versacopter Slim and I sent it out to get prototyped. That's working out so well, I thought why not revisit some other older designs. There's one design of a multi-rotor that I absolutely love and I miss like crazy and unfortunately I just simply don't have any more and that's the backbone. I had an absolute ball with this quad flying through an abandoned warehouse with my good friend Chad Capper and David Vendestol. I want to reimagine and recreate that board and then send it off to PCB Way much the same way I did with the Versacopter Slim and see if it's everything I remember it to be. An ability to draw something and send it off to PCB Way is not just something Playtest can do, that's something you guys can do too. So I'm going to go ahead and hunt down the original files, I'm going to do a couple tweaks and I'm going to send that off to PCB Way. If you guys have an idea or a prototype that you want to make a reality, check the link in the description below. You can use PCB Way to make that a reality. All right, so we're out here with the Boomin' Flurkin, and we've got Mike set up with the Cinelifter and a good camera on it. I think we're going to do some real nice, slow, yep. you know, cinematic stuff. And then uh, he's going to switch over to his other quad. And then, we're gonna, have a lot of fun. and then we're going to push the limits. This is actually the maiden flight of the Flurkin with FPV gear. And anytime you guys maiden an aircraft with FPV, make sure that you have a spotter and also someone to hand the controls off to. Because if, God forbid, I lose signal one point or another, I can hand it right over to Dave. He has eyes, eyes on it. Life is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything to do to save the plane. Yeah, and, and the things around it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to plug this in. We're going to get flying. That's Mike taking off with a sin lifter, right? Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's crazy. So Dave, you're my protector, and this is two now. <laughs> I love how easy this thing turns. Yeah, the differential makes a huge difference. Oh, I'm bouncing like crazy. I hope I don't lose the, uh, go. the go. Are you ready, guys? Everything looks good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Those uh, colors just really pop. It does. Well, I'll tell you, the colors through the DJI, it pops too. So I don't have the aura on here. Whenever we design an airplane, we don't put any stabilization in whatsoever. We want to make sure that it flies nice and stable. And it's crazy, because right now you'd swear that there's the uh, some kind of stabilization in it. It even soft levels easy. Yeah, now when we built the giant flurkin, booming flurkin, yeah. back at Flight Fest last year, um, I painted a camo theme on it and yes. it looked phenomenal. You ran with it and we're gonna have a kit available yeah. to actually uh, put vinyl on your planes and it's way easier. We'll do a whole bunch of complimenting colors and that way you guys can pick out your favorite color combo. Even with the brown flight test foam uh, from the original, we should hopefully have some colors that will really complement the, uh, the yellows and the oranges and the matte blacks and the grays just really look good. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. It flies so smooth. And you don't even have to use that on just the flurkin. I mean, it's going to be a universal kit. It's just yeah. going to be uh, basically urban camo. Is that what they call it? I, I was I, wondering. I believe it's urban camo. It's just blockier. Um, it's not digital, but, you know, it just has, like, sharper lines and everything. I think in some aspects it's actually easier to work with. Yeah, and it looks incredible. Yeah. Boy, as stable as this is, Dave, when we put the ore on this, it's going to be the ultimate FPV platform. That's incredible. And I'm just, I'm just, I think, a little bit below half throttle, right? Um, yeah, yeah, you're right at about half. I'll get a little bit more gutsy here and, and go over the treetops and stuff. And then I'll have the land, we'll switch batteries, and we'll go up and uh, push the limits. Look how gorgeous the golf course looks now. So we have a couple events coming up. One event is uh, our open house just in a couple weeks here, but uh, unfortunately it's in bad weather. But our biggest event, I'm sorry, we have a couple of real cool events, but our biggest event is uh, Wings Over Edgewater, and that's Memorial Day weekend. Oh, take it, I, I froze. Got it? You were uh, pointed right at the ground. <laughs> I figured that happened pretty quick. Wow. Yeah. So that is right there one of the best benefits to having a buddy. Uh, I literally locked up and froze, 
And if I had the uh, FT or 5 on that, I could have flipped in the level assist, pulled my goggles off, life would have been good. But I don't have that on there right now. And if I would have lost it, that would have been bad. So, Dave, thank you so much, man. Yeah, no problem. Did it come back or is it still out? Yeah, no, it's back. It's back. What do you think of the flying characteristics? Oh, it flies great. Real smooth. Checking all my antennas here. It might have been because uh, Mike plugged it. Oh, that's true. That's true. Um, that is a really good point. <laughs> are you are you HD zero? No, you're DJI. Yeah, we shouldn't. Actually, you're seven, and I'm channel eight, so that's probably why. <laughs> that could have been. We ran it. into that the first time we flew the original first. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I ended up in a tree. <laughs> I'm over there. No, that's not me. That's me. Oh, we. Are you still flying? You told me the wrong one. I'm gone. <laughs> So one nice thing about this, if you watch this now and you built a stock flurkin like me and I, I really want to build a boom and flurkin, we're going to have the boom kit optional. All you need to do is simply cut off your uh, rudders, remove your rear motor, and then you can actually put the boom on. You can put the boom kit on, the optional. A little short. <laughs> That's okay. It's a good stress test on it. And there's a well. So, I forgot to add differential. <laughs> so we're going to have this kit available as a full bloom and flirkin kit, but we're also going to have the boom for an add-on option. So you can cut off your old rudders and you can put this on with the twin motor. You just need to remove the old one. That way you can kind of keep your classic flirkin flying. All right, so uh, let's swap out some batteries and have some real fun. Let's push the limits. <laughs> Round two, fight. All right, so there's no way we're not going to push the limits on this a little bit. Ready, guys? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, well, first things first, we gotta go to where we like. Gotta do some ground chasing here. One of my favorite things to do is just go over the tips. And if you're flying proximity flying and you wanna kinda feel out and get a rush, just go right above the treetops and kinda play with your area. Then at that point, you can search down, look for some cool gaps that you want to dip and dive down through. But it just looks so cool. Here, I'm going to go down through this one right here. Whee! Yep. I'm going to go between this tree. I love it. You have speed, but you don't need it. Like, half throttle is intense. Let's go right around the willow tree here. Yeah, it really is a perfect setup for FPV. I mean, even even if you do slow down too much, it doesn't yeah. tip stall on you. No. It just it just falls like a leaf. It, it's just perfectly stable. It's ridiculously stable. stable, yeah. Oh my gosh, this is fun. Okay, Michael, I think we're gonna go low, okay? I wanna go down the runway here. And I think we'll stay low and see what we can go underneath us. I'll try to call out my pattern here, but I don't even know what I'm gonna do yet. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean? All right, no man's land here behind the pole. Under the power lines. Oh, I'm gonna push the limits here. Right through that gap. Yes! <laughs> and a nice roll to. to... <laughs> I had no signal for this. Really? Yeah, I was gonna so, do one. One of the great things about this area at Edgewater you guys made possible is the noise floor is so low. You just got incredible signal everywhere you go. Oh, I love this. Fast pass. You know, if I didn't want to, uh, if I didn't want to destroy the airplane, I would do the tunnel. This would be the plane I would choose to do the tunnel with. You have another one. <laughs> I like this plane, dude. That's what we call peer pressure. That is, I know. But it, it makes some of the best content, right? Yeah. I almost said, let's go over to the uh, the, the pine trees, but I remember there's a net on the other side now. Could you see a river run someday? Yeah, that could be a lot of fun. I just want to line up and see what it feels like. Oh, let's just go for it. <laughs> yeah! Well, pine... <laughs> Got pretty close to All the right. wires. <laughs> I'm going to say this without a shadow of a doubt. This is my favorite FPV plane. It is just, if you dream it, you can do it, you know? Holy cow, guys. All right. Well, all right, Michael, yep. I'm going to line up for the tunnel. Wow. 
Uh, yeah! Oh, great job. <laughs> Dodge those trees. <laughs> that is incredible. All right, guys, if you like FPV, you gotta get one of these. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, I don't know if there's any other challenges we could do right now. Oh, I got one. And we'll finish off the battery, okay? Now I'm curious. Yeah, no, it's nothing special. It's just my, one of my favorite lines. If I was up on uh, on the upper runway, I would be shooting a different one. But I love this fire pit right here, right down along the lines. And this is where everyone gets to camp out to our right. I don't know, the roll, guys. All right, I'm happy. Let's bring it in for a landing because we have Memorial Day flying coming in. I want this in one piece, and also. I want to do some more uh, pushing the limits with it. Let's bring it in for a landing. Friends, if you're ever out towards Edgewater, this is an open air park for you. All you need to do is fly the, uh, or sign the waiver. And once you do, you are good to fly. You don't need to belong to the AMA. We have our own safety guidelines through the FTCA. Come out and join this make of memory. There it is. <laughs> That's it. Great job, buddy. Thanks, my Great friend. Job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so honestly, my intent was to push the limits and to kind of high five and check out the damage. This is so locked in. You can line up with anything you want. And because of the counter rotating props, because of that twin boom tail, it just locks it. This was with no aura, so we don't have any stabilization working for us. It's just natural that good. Yeah, so uh, if you like it, check it out on the store. Make sure you pick one up, and we'll see you next time. See you next time.